everyone, and welcome to the very first overview of the Brutus and Rowe Ink Collection. Uh, first and foremost, we are going to lay out our ink varieties here. We have the full-size pads, which you see on the left-hand side, uh, the miniature pads, which you see in the center, which are one-inch uh, square pads, and we do also offer re-inkers for all of the uh, chalk inks. Uh, now, these are chalk inks, and we're going to go over today some of the different properties of these chalk inks and all 16 colors that we currently have uh, in the Brutus and Rowe line of inks. So first and foremost, what I would like to review with everyone uh, is just some regular everyday stamping with the inks. We are going to go ahead and take uh, one of our uh, stamp sets from Brutus and Rowe. It's a clear stamp set, and we are going to take some of our locomotive ink. Uh, it is in the chalk ink family, and it is a very, very, very dark grayish blue color. Uh, it was the original uh, dark kind of black in the collection. And we're going to go ahead and we are going to stamp quite a few of these butterflies uh, so that I can show you uh, kind of one of the main properties of the inks. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to stamp a few of these on some 140 pound uh, cold press watercolor paper. Now one of the very very first properties of the inks is that they are permanent once they're completely dry. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use some squeaky clean there from Brutus and Rowe to clean off our are stamped there. So again, they are permanent on paper once they're completely dry. They will dry on their own, uh, but you can go ahead and zap them with a the heat gun if you would like, and that will just speed up the drying time. So the second property that we're going to talk about today is that you are able to watercolor with the actual inks. So you can watercolor with the same ink that you're using that's permanent. So we're just going to swash out a little bit of the rouge color in the collection. It's a very uh, deep pink. We're going to grab our Brutus and Rowe uh, water brush here, and we're just going to add a little bit of water uh, to the ink there. Uh, I suggest using a craft mat. Any craft mat will do to swish out the inks uh, because they are permanent on acetate. So they are going to try to stick to acetate, although you can add some water to, uh, to thin them out to use them as a watercolor. So you can see here, I'm just watercolor coloring right over top of the uh, area that was already stamped with the exact same ink formulation. So we used the locomotive ink, which is, uh, of course, again, in the chalk ink line. And uh, now we're using the rouge, which again is the same formulation, and we are going to go ahead and color that in uh, with the water coloring. So we're not grabbing uh, multiple uh, different styles of ink now, we're just using the same inks from the same collection. Now I'm going to grab uh, some aubergine ink, which is a beautiful, beautiful deep purple ink. Again, we're going to add some water to it, mix it around, and use it just like we would with any other watercolor. And we're just going to add that in with the rouge color. Uh, as you'll see here, I'm just blotting off a little bit of the water, because you don't want to use too, too much water uh, with the watercoloring, or else, of course, it will puddle and go everywhere. And you can see that those two colors melted together uh, very, very well. Uh, next, we are going to be grabbing the C color. Uh, this is a new color from our line, one of the... Uh, the four new colors, excuse me, that were recently released in our summer collection. And as you can see there, again, I'm just adding in uh, some of the water from the water brush, and I am going to go ahead and pull that color out onto our butterfly image there as well. Uh, next, we're going to do our fourth butterfly, and uh, with this, uh, we're going to be using the phone book color, which is a very deep goldish uh almost like a honey mustard color uh, that we're using for this butterfly. So again, we're just applying a little bit of water and we are able to maneuver that ink onto our butterfly. And you are gonna get these beautiful, beautiful jewel tones from all of the inks. And it just, I think, looks spectacular when you use them to watercolor. So now what we're gonna move on to, now that we've done our watercoloring, is we are going to go ahead and use our alcohol markers with the inks. So this is the third property of the Brutus and Rowe inks. We can now take our Copic markers, which is the first marker that I'm using here, as well as Spectrum Noirs or any other alcohol marker that you have, and you can uh, go ahead and color right over top of your image. So now to recap of those properties, we now have an ink that is 
waterproof once it's completely dry, one that we can use the exact same ink to watercolor with, and an ink that we are able to use our alcohol markers with. So those are three of the properties that I really, really uh, wanted to stress with these inks because I was using so many different inks for one project. So as you can see here, we've now zoomed in, and you can see there's no smearing or smudging with that ink, which I think is just super, super, super cool uh, about these inks in the collection. So next what we're going to do is we are going to do a little bit of blending with the inks. This is another property of the inks that I really, really like, uh, and that is that we are able to blend with them. So I am just grabbing a, a little dauber tool here, and I'm going to pick up some of the C color. And uh, we're just going to pick up uh, quite a bit of that on our little dauber here. And we're going to start off of our piece of paper, and we're just in a swirling motion going to bring that over and onto the corner of the paper. Now, with these inks, they will move around uh, quite a bit whenever you're blending them. Uh, but remember that they are a permanent ink as well. So once they are completely dried, you can do whatever you would like over top of this blending, whether that is a wet technique or paint or gesso or anything of that nature, and they are not going to smear, which is a really, really cool property of the inks. So we're going to go ahead and blend this out, and you'll get a beautiful, beautiful matte, almost paint-like finish once everything is completely blended out here on the paper. So we're just going to continue uh, moving around that C color, and we're going to go ahead and cap that, and then we are going to bring in our aubergine color, which again is just that beautiful, beautiful purple, deep, deep royal purple that is in uh, currently in the collection. So again, we're going to start off of our um, off of our piece of paper here, and we're just going to bring that aubergine color into the corner. Now, as you can see here, there is a harsh line once we get started, but you want to move that color out into the previous color so that you have a lighter shade that is uh, at the end of the deeper, of course, uh, color. So now we're going to go ahead and take our C color again, and we are just going to bring that into the center, and we're going to use that to blend the two colors together. And you'll see here that they will start to blend together just absolutely beautifully. So you could use this for, you know, water, or you could use this to create a sunset with other colors. It's really, again, the sky's the limit once you start blending different colors together. And, uh, of course, you would want to blend, you know, some light colors together as well, uh, as in colors that are similar to one another. But I wanted to show you an example here with the aubergine and the teal color to show you, you know, how well they will uh, blend together uh, once they are used. Uh, uh, you know, in tandem on a, you know, with a blending uh, tool, whatever, whether that's a dauber or whatever uh, you're going to use. So I'm just taking a look at it to make sure that the blending is, is what I like. And we're going to go ahead and move on then to our next uh, property of the inks. So our next property is that they are permanent on fabric. So uh, that permanency that comes uh, from the uh, being permanent on paper, now can be applied to a fabric application. So we're going to go ahead and take uh, the dauber again, and we're going to use the aubergine color. And I'm just using a piece of burlap here. You could use canvas, you could use uh, t-shirt material, you could use whatever you would like. Just remember that you have to let this sit for about 48 hours in order for it to become completely permanent on the fabric. Uh, or you could, of course, uh, put it into a dryer to heat set it, and it would become permanent after that heat setting. So we're just taking that dauber and we're applying it to a stencil and we're just going to go ahead and pat and pat just like you would with any other stencil or any other type of ink and we're going to lift up that stencil and you can see that beautiful uh, kind of honeycomb uh, pattern that we have there left behind and this would be really awesome for mixed media or for card making or tags uh, whatever you would be doing in whatever application but again it is going to be completely permanent once it does dry. So now we have the permanency on fabric. So we're next going to move along to our final uh, final kind of application that we could use the ink for, and that is that it is also permanent on glass. 
So we're putting down a stencil here on a, a glass cutting board that is from uh, our local dollar store. And uh, I'm just smoothing it all down to make sure that it's completely flat on this glass surface. And then we're gonna go ahead and again, take that same aubergine color and we are going to use a dauber and we are just going to pat again through the holes in the uh, stencil to get a full, uh, to get full coverage, excuse me, with the stencil. Now you can do this as light or as dark as you would like. I'm going to be doing just one coat on the glass, so it's going to be a little bit of a lighter coverage, but you can do as many coats as you would like. You would just keep the stencil on, wait for it to dry, and then come back and apply another layer over top. So once you get all of this uh, patted down, and again, I'm not going to do the entire stencil, but I am going to do bits and pieces for the, the sake of the length of this video. And uh, we'll go ahead and, of course, pull up the stencil, and you will see what we have underneath. So we're going to go ahead and put our cap back onto our uh, ink there, and you can see that we have beautiful coverage on uh, that cutting board. What I'm doing now is I'm going to take a cutting board that has been heat set, uh, as well as has been allowed to dry for about 48 hours, and I'm just spraying some water on there, and you'll see that none of that ink is rubbing off. So again, as long as you either heat set it, uh, you can heat set it with the, the same instructions you would for like a Sharpie in the oven, or just allow it to set for about 48 hours, you'll be good to go um, with it set on there. So again, to review, uh, those are all of the inks that we had today, uh, that we had to review today, excuse me, uh, all of the properties, and uh, stay tuned in the future, we are going to be reviewing the Brutus and Road Detail ink next, which has the same uh, properties of uh, being uh, waterproof as well as able to use with alcohol markers. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.